Welcome back to the kitchen, friends. About a week ago, Rachel was rummaging down in the freezer looking for, a lot of times on Mondays, well, she'll pull out a bunch of meat for the week, and that will kind of like, that's our dinners for the week. And she found a big old flank steak from, I think we purchased a quarter of a cow a couple years ago that was still stashed back in the freezer. And we made steak fajitas out of it, and they were amazing. So we're going to do the same thing again today. Um, this is a flank steak that we purchased from our local butcher shop. And our friend Jeff over at the Homestead Dad YouTube channel is running a collaboration this month on all things grilling, smoking, barbecue type thing. Summer's the perfect time for it. And I thought, I'm gonna re resurrect this fajita meal we cooked the other day and show you guys how we did it. So if you wanna give it a try, you can as well. The, um, I think it's just over a pound, maybe 1.25 pounds. And in the beginning here, we're just gonna go through the preparation process. We're gonna get it pounded out. Um, flank steak can be pretty tough if you don't tenderize it and marinate it. So we're gonna go through a uh, tenderization process with a meat hammer and marinate it for quite a few hours, maybe three hours or so, and then we'll take it out to the grill and we'll cook it up the rest of the way and all the fixings to go along with it. When you, when you purchase flank steak, you're gonna see that it has grains that run through it in some direction. It's gonna be really easy to see in the beginning of the process. Remember that orientation, remember how to identify it because when, when all is said and done as your meat is cooked, you're gonna to wanna to slice it against that grain. So, so if you're gonna pound out one of these bad boys, put a towel underneath your cutting board, it'll absorb a lot of the shock. And a lot of times if you, when you're pounding, whether you're pounding beef, chicken, whatever you're pounding with one of these hammers, it can splatter and like literally make a huge mess across your kitchen. So either some saran wrap or, or a nice Ziploc bag placed over the top. That way when you pound on it, it's not splattering stuff and it just makes things a lot cleaner. And we're gonna do, do the same process on both sides. I think that pretty came Came pretty close to doubling the size of the meat, it feels like. So we are going to put the slab of wonderful goodness in this bag, a little Ziploc bag, and add some marinade. We're gonna go pretty simple with the seasoning as far as the marinade process. And we're gonna add some lime juice and some Dale seasoning. And we'll let that sit on the meat for, like I said, about three hours. Ziploc bags are nice for marinating because you can massage the meat and swirl it around and get a nice even, even coating of your marinade. Not too much lime juice. And this Dale seasoning is really strong, so. And a couple tablespoons. Dale seasoning kind of tastes um, almost like a beef flavored soy sauce, is kind of how I would describe it. It can be really salty. They do make a low sodium version, but me, I'm kind of a salt junkie. So, so there we go. We're gonna deposit this guy in the fridge for the next two or three hours. Go get a few other chores done around the homestead. And then I will meet you guys back outside at the grill and we'll continue our process. And I'll tell you more um, a little bit about the collaboration itself when we get outside.
sometime in the last, hmm, I don't know what my guess would be, six months, eight months ago, I bought one of those carbon steel pans. It's a lot like um, cast iron, in, in, as in how you treat it and how you care for it. And I've been using it more and more and more lately and I'm absolutely falling in love with it. You season them basically just like cast iron. When you're, when you're done using it, it's virtually non-stick at this point. When you're done using it, just rinse it out just like a cast iron pan, oil it down, and we just leave them here on our stove. We never even really put them away. They can be kind of expensive. I think this one was maybe $40 or something like that on Amazon. But they'll last forever, just like a like a cast iron pan will. So a little butter. We'll toss in our onions, our green peppers, and we'll let this cook and caramelize in the house. Got a little onion skin in there. Getting the onion I dropped. Oh. So, are you guys ready for the not so secret secret sauce? <laughs> <laughs> I make up sauces all the time for based on whatever we're having, whatever we're eating. And he made fajitas the other day, and I was like, well, it needs something yummy with it. So, I take kind of like, I don't know, it's probably like a good three tablespoons of sour cream. And then I take probably half of that of enchilada sauce. We'll link this recipe down below. I made it for the first time last year. It's phenomenal. Um, and then I just mix it together. <laughs> That's it. I do this a lot with like mayonnaise dressings, things. It's just like whatever I think is going to go good with whatever we're having. I'll make a concoction. <laughs> Well, it works out well. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Yeah. So I think like lime juice would be good in it. Some cilantro even would be good in it. Do we have cilantro yet? Yeah, I have a lot of cilantro in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, this would be great on fish tacos too. Mm. So that's it. And then it turns out into this lovely little pink pink sauce. So our meat has been marinating for close to four hours now. I'm just gonna slide this guy right in there under that flame. So for seasoning, normally, under most normal conditions, we make up our own fajita seasoning. Cumin, chili powder, garlic, onion, that type of thing. I really wanted to try this stuff by this company called Bolner's. I was looking on, on Amazon. I'm always researching new stuff on Amazon, things that like other people know about that's like really good, but you don't know about it unless you do a bunch of research. It's like thousands and thousands of like five-star reviews. Um, B-O-L-H-N-E-R-S, I think is what it is. Yeah, B-O-L-H. Yeah, it's super tiny. I can read with my glasses on. I'll put, a, I'll put a link to this in the description. And then at the end, when we taste our fajitas, if they turn out amazing and you want to get yourself some, you're welcome to.
Oh no. <laughs> oh, we just lost some juice. So the dogs are gonna be going crazy. The meat is in, it is cooked beautifully. All the juices are starting to run out of it, as you can see. You wanna, when you're done cooking this, you wanna cook it fast like we did. This literally cooked for like a total of two minutes on each side or so. When you bring it in the house, set it on your cutting board or whatever you're gonna set it on and let it sit for like four to five minutes just to rest before you cut it open. Good, babe. Are you excited? Mm-hmm. The one thing I did not tell you guys about right before I cut the meat. Remember at the beginning when I told you, remember how the grain structure of the of the meat runs? Cut it against the grain, not with the grain. So if the meat, the fibers are running this way, cut them this way. You're such a teacher. <laughs> such a teacher? Yeah. But honestly, as a not somebody that didn't know how to cook, like I only learned that from him teaching me. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And we decided to <laughs> we decided to come out and eat on the porch. Somewhat cool tonight. 77, 78, something like that. The lighting in our house is terrible right now because the sun is just coming in the back of them, as I'm sure you saw some of the lighting in those last few clips there. But we eat a lot of our meals on the porch. We do. Mm -hmm. Especially lunches. Yeah. My salad, if you missed it, was made with um, homegrown iceberg lettuce and spinach. And then I put some of my home canned chili beans on it. And I'm wishing that I had put some cowboy candy on it because that would be good. <laughs> So this collaboration, I talked about it at the beginning a little bit, it was organized by Jeff, who his channel name is The Homestead Dad. He's also a local Michigander from mm -hmm. Michigan. Doesn't live too far away from us, actually. And I think he has close to 20 really excellent YouTube channels participating in this collaboration with him for this month. Way too many to list. Um, too many for me to list yeah. them all. I, I'd be talking for two or three minutes just listing channel names. So I will put all of them down in the description below. It's the perfect time of the year for it. Summer, 4th of July is coming. Everybody needs grilling ideas. So be sure to check out a lot of the other channels involved in this collaboration as well. If, mm -hmm. I, I don't you know if there's going to be like a whole playlist of all of them. I'm sure Jeff will do that. Probably. Yeah. We'll link the playlist as well. Dig it? Mm -hmm. Thank you to Jeff, Homestead Dad over at his YouTube channel for putting this together and organizing. Definitely. Appreciate you. We Definitely. Appreciate, yeah. Appreciate okay. you guys watching as well. Absolutely. And if you're new here and you found us through the Curlab, we'd invite you to subscribe. Go down, check out. We got quite a few playlists and it might, maybe not every topic that we touch interests you, but I bet that there's one that you might find interesting down there. So go check it out. Talk to you guys later. See you guys.